what it ain't it's your girl ombre alert and i am back with another video okay y'all in today's video this is the first video starting my biopic series and i know you're probably gonna be like biopic series what does that mean what it means is i'm going to be talking about facts that happened in the people's life that were in the biopic for example today's video is going to be talking about the movie why do fools fall in love but specifically i am talking about frankie lyman the lead singer of the group the teenagers so we're going to get into it okay i am going to be dropping facts about frankie's life um things that you may not have known things that i didn't know before i did some research um things that were left out in the movie so we're going to get into that basically that's what the biopic series is is what the facts that they left out in the movie so if you're ready to get into it i need you to like i need you to comment below because this is juicy like all my videos it's going to be juicy okay and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this get into this biopic series we're going to be going through all of the biopics as many as i can do i will do because a lot of these movies i grew up on watching them and were always interested in them because it's almost like their stories were so juicy even if they weren't good it's like sometimes if it, it felt like you know the stories were so juicy that it's almost hard to believe that it's true you know so i'm gonna get into it all right let's do it so frankie lima was the lead singer of the group the teenagers and they were from washington heights new york he, he became famous when he was 13 years old um he was known for his signature voice and he most of his life he looked kind of like a child so uh, some people kind of thought that he was had some sort of dwarfism or something like that but that wasn't the case i just wanted to make that clear okay so most of his you know fame he was a teenager so he was in the he was the lead singer in the group the teenagers and they became famous off the song why do fools fall in love hence the movie title okay so they were a doo-wop singing group and they started this trend of the young men teenage groups that will come out later like the beach boys the temptations and the jackson five um so most of the groups modeled themselves after five members of the group since frankie lyman and the teenagers so they started a trend um because he was the lead singer of the group he became famous at the age of 13 which is very 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 young and he was the hottest singer out like at the time and this time period was like the 1950s when he started to get famous so he was 13 years old um they the group they got discovered by the lead singer of another group called the valentines and his name was richie barrett so he discovered them when they were singing they used to sing in their neighborhood until the cops were called would be called because they would be too loud or anything like that so they would practice and rehearse and sing all day long and someone discovered them from another group Lyman did a interview excuse me with ebony magazine and he said and i quote I never was a child. Although I was billed in every theater and auditorium when I appeared as a child star, I was a man when I was 11 years old, doing everything that most men do. While kids my age were playing stickball and marbles, I was working in the corner grocery store, carrying orders to help pay my pay the rent. So that's basically how his childhood was through his eyes is that he had to grow up super fast and he was never really able to be a child because his parents he had five brothers and sisters and his parents really put the pressure on him as far as supporting the family at only 11 years old so him being a superstar at 13 and going on tour i bet that that was a lot to handle and they didn't really touch on that in the movie we didn't get to see like him um we didn't get re really get to see the age difference i think i think that's what i wanted to see is the age difference and how he transitioned into an, a young adult he was doing a performance on tv and 
you know, the performance, it was getting popping, you know what I'm saying? It was getting lit. So a white girl had came up on the screen and she was dancing with Frankie Lyman and I believe they were holding hands or something while they were dancing and it's said that the TV show was canceled um, because of the the racial, you know, because of the racism they canceled the TV, the TV show episode. And that's just to show you how the time period was. And this was two years after Rosa Parks had got arrested on the bus um, for not giving up her seat to a white man. So just to give you a little glimpse of what the time period was like during those times. In the 1950s, um, because music roared, um, people like uh, Little Richard and Diana Ross and Jerry Lewis and Elvis and Chuck Berry were like the the famous people that had came out just around that time and it was a lot of talent around in TV. Mainstream America was really produced on TV as being middle class. So what what people other people that weren't from America saw mostly was that Americans lived a pretty, you know, pretty good life. They had a house and with the picket the white picket fence that's where that whole theory comes from and you know the wife and the kids and and the two-car garage and the always having food and having money left over for nice clothes and stuff so that's how Americans were broadcast on TV but we all know that that's not how all Americans lived um, during that time but that's just what was broadcasted that's that's just what white people were doing. Frankie's manager and the record label agreed that he was the star of the group. He was the one getting all the shine. He was the one everybody was talking about. He was the one that was the most famous. So what had happened was they ended up collabing the manager and the record label and they wanted Frankie to go solo. And he agreed and he went solo and he left his bandmates behind. Now my theory is is that this was a good career move for him solo, but I feel like internally it it made him feel very lonely and, you know, he lost his friends because of the fame and the money and everything. He lost his friends, so he lost, you know, really just the fun of it all, you know? You gotta have fun in, some, in, in something that you're doing, so I feel like he just kind of just it kind of became like a job to him and less like a fun opportunity he did go solo and he made the hit song goody goody that's the song that i know because my parents played that song to death when i was growing up so i actually did not know what why do fools fall love sounded like until now um i heard goody goody first and i really like that song and I actually thought it was a woman just because his voice is so like high pitched and it's so like sweet and smooth that I thought it was a female. I had to ask my mom, is this a woman? And she was like, no, it's a, it's a little, it's a boy. It's a guy. And I was like, oh, okay. On that song, Goody Goody, my mom and dad loved that song. Um, so he made that song when he went solo and then things started to get slower in his career after that song and it, it was a good song but it didn't do as well as why the fools fall in love when he was in a group and this did make his career kind of go downhill a little bit um he started to engage in drugs and he did become fully addicted to heroin at the age of 15. so young it's just so young and sad you know honestly and in the movie it's like they kind of sped it up so it just made it seem like all of a sudden he just was a heroin addict and it would have been nice to kind of see the stages of that like what really made him want to do that for real um because he was just so young at that age it's just 15 years old on heroin so but one thing that they didn't put in the movie also is that he did try to kick his habit several times and um unfortunately his mom passed away in between him trying to kick his habit and um he just went right back to it right back to 
the drugs, unfortunately. So they didn't make it seem like he was a very open person. Because most people that are on, like, really hard drugs, they want to kind of pretend like they're normal and, like, you know, everything is all good. But he wasn't really like that. And I like that he was being super honest and super real. He said in his own words, I look twice my age. I was thin as a shadow. And I didn't even, I didn't give a damn. You know an addict is the most pathetic creature on earth. He knows that every time he sticks a needle in his arm, he's he's gambling with death. And yet he's got to have it. So I just, wow. I was just like, that's a lot to say for someone that's, you know, addicted to heroin. And for him to speak up about it and for him to consciously be thinking about you know just being very honest it makes me think that he did want to get help and he did want to change and he he was thinking about his health in the movie it didn't make it seem like that like the producers and everybody was just calling him a junkie and it was people after him um the record labels was after him it was drug dealers after him and i'm sure there is some truth to that and in, in the chaos i'm sure there is some truth to that but i feel like when when you overshadow that and you just think about the bad things you don't you stop thinking about the humanity of it all and that he was a person so in between like his career he did have women and it is correct that he did have three wives like in the movie vivica vivica a fox and Halle berry played two of his wives and i forgot the other lady's name but i'll put it in here um, she also played his wife and so that part was true that he did have three wives he may have married two of them at a time or all three at the same time or one first one second one third we don't really know that but um so he did have several wives and and another thing that they didn't put in the movie is that he did go to rehab and i'm not sure how long he was in rehab but it doesn't matter dare I say again it's like when you just focus on making money off of something or making money off of someone's story you're not leaving you're leaving out the humanity of it all and he was thinking about his health he did want to get better and he did go to rehab and he went to the Manhattan General Hospital to have rehab when he was 24 years old he um, in 1966 he left rehab and he said he felt like he was born again and he felt better and he wanted his story to help somebody else that was young and in his position and to not make the same mistakes that he did and i i commend him on that because he tried you know what i'm saying um he was living a fast life and anybody that's young and especially black um would have a hard time dealing with the pressures of the pressures of being young and being successful so quickly and not having a childhood and just life just moving so fast that you can't really catch your breath so i commend him on trying really hard to you know fix his addiction and do what was best for him and get better this is going to conclude part one of the frankie lyman why do fools fall in love biopic series talking about the facts of his life that they left out of the movie if you guys really enjoyed this video i hope you did because i enjoy doing the research if you enjoyed this video make sure you like and comment below make sure you subscribe to this channel and get ready for part two because part two is going to be vicious okay so i'm going to get out of here it's ombre alert and i'll see y'all in the next video bye